Hello. My name is uh, LaShawn Thomas, and I'm a producer and director uh, for television production uh, in the United States. I've worked on uh, mostly TV animation productions, probably you've heard of them or not. The Legend of Korra, The Boondocks animated show on Adult Swim, Batman Brave and the Bold uh, for DC, and most currently um, uh, Black Dynamite, the animated series currently airing on Adult Swim. And I got into animation probably right after I tried to become a comic book artist back in the 90s. Kind of fell into uh, a design assistant gig for some children's accessories uh, company that did licensing for Disney. And there were a lot of artists that came in and out of there and a few of them, you know, noticed my drawing ability and would hire me to do some freelance work for them from time to time, which were animation related projects. So working on those projects, I met producers in the field and connections after connections and I wound up just gearing more towards animation production. I moved to Korea not by normal means. I, I moved here because uh, America, our television shows are outsourced here. All of our animation is done by South Koreans, primarily. So after we're done making everything, like writing, coloring, designing, and doing storyboards, we ship it all here to South Korea, and South Koreans animate that, you know? So it's, it's been like that for every show that you know, like Family Guy, King of the Hill, Simpsons, Kim Possible, Bob's Burgers, Cleveland Show, SpongeBob, all of those shows, even the Boondocks and, and Avatar The Last Airbender, all of those shows are animated here by South Koreans and South Korea. Americans don't animate those shows. So because of that compartmentalizing system, uh, pre-production is mainly just pre-production so if you want to know how animation is done you're kind of on your own you know because we don't animate in the states and I as I became more experienced in the field I became frustrated and filled with a lot of questions so you know I took it upon myself to just say hey you know what I want to know the entire process I'm gonna quit my job and figure out a way to move to Korea and work at an animation studio, which is something uh, Korean studios have never really done before. And that's how I got here. Not saying that I learned everything I needed to know in pre-production, but I just felt like I was missing a major part of what it took for me personally to be a producer, to be the kind of producer or director I wanted to be. And I felt that didn't, it didn't make any sense for me to be a director or a producer and not have any experience working in the most important part of what it is we do, which is animation. So I kind of took it upon myself to, you know, uproot myself and plant myself so that I can learn more, so that I can step outside of my comfort zone, so that I can challenge myself more, carve my own path. That led me to making the decision to, to leave. I originally came here with the, with, the, with the pretense that I'd learned something new, I'd gained something new, and then I could come back and take that experience. But because I've gained that experience, because I have those connections now, uh, that stuff is being exploited. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, they know that I, I can speak and work with the Korean staff. So, you know, it's a it's a benefit for productions to have a guy like me fly out here, you know, to supervise the animation. So because of that small step I made years ago, it's now become something that has been what I am, so to speak, in production. I'm now the overseas guy. I'm the guy who knows <laughs> how to communicate with the talent overseas. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you want to be an animator or anything. I think it's important to be yourself. You know, when you see a celebrity or you see an individual um, that's just completely being, just completely living and expressing themselves, you see how people who aren't comfortable doing that who have to behave a certain way to please certain people, you see how they respond to those celebrities and those idols. They worship them, they idolize them because they admire, you know, that individual's ability to just express and not be afraid of what anyone thinks. And I think that in order for you to truly, you know, express yourself and, and, and go for your dreams, you have to be willing to, to, to fail. You know, that, I think that's the key point. Is, is failure. Failure is a, is a big deal because you don't learn anything if you don't try. If you if you haven't failed yet, then you aren't trying hard enough. You know what I'm saying? So you have to learn through failure and there is a such thing as successful failures and using failure as a method to grow and develop and not as something that you run away from. You know, I think that's so important to the process of innovation. You have to, you know, anticipate failure. Just, just try hard and, and, and push yourself and I think you'll be okay. I think there's there's a there's a lot to be said about crazy people, and and when I mean crazy people, I mean 
the people who don't think like the norm. You know, it's the crazy people who really push us forward. I think in society, they 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 force free thinking. The the crazy people are the people you know that that push us forward、um, and, and and propel us. And I think that、uh, without them, we'd all probably still be thinking the world is flat. You know, so、uh, this be crazy. You know, don't hurt anybody. You'll be good. <laughs> Zimbabwe, 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 Zimbabwe station. <laughs>